In these examples, I'm told to solve the equation by taking the square root of each side. And a lot of simple quadratic equations can be solved this way. In the first one, x squared equals 9, so I just take the square root of the left side, that's the square root of x squared, and the square root of the right side is the square root of 9. And I can often skip that step or just do it in my head. You should understand that the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So the square root of x squared is simply x. And then the square root of 9, you think, well, that's 3, right? Because 3 times 3 equals 9. And that's right. But also remember that negative 3 times negative 3 also equals 9. So negative 3 is also the square root of 9. So I can write 3 as an answer or negative 3 as an answer, and I really should put both. And I put both by putting a plus or minus sign right here in front of the 3. And I read that as x equals plus or minus 3. And this indicates that there are two answers, positive 3 and negative 3, and both of them are shown right there. And that is very typical for a quadratic equation to have two answers. The plus or minus shows up almost every time. In example number 2, x squared equals 7. So we'll just take the square root of each side and the square root of x squared will give me simply x and the square root of 7, don't forget the plus or minus, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7 and that's my answer. There's two answers there, positive square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. And that's typically how you want to leave your answer. That is the exact answer. We can't write it as a decimal place, a decimal number exactly because the square root of 7 is an irrational number and those digits go on and on forever. We could write it as a decimal, rounded, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll, I'll compute the square root of 7 on a calculator. So here we have it. Turn it on and we can simply say the square root of 7 and hit enter. And it tells me 2.646. And so uh, I'm just going to round that to 2.646, and I'll write that down. I can say x is approximately equal to, and a little squiggly equals like this, it means approximately equal to 2.646. That Writing it that way tells me that this is not an exact answer. Now the mathematician would typically prefer the answer left this way, in radical form, with the radical sign there, because that is exact. In the real world, though, a physicist or an engineer might want to use that number, a decimal number rounded to a certain number of places. Either of those could be correct, depending on what you need the number for. But typically in math class, if you're asked to give the number as a decimal number, and you might be asked to give it as a decimal number rounded to a certain number of places, then you would write it like this. Otherwise, though, you would give this answer, plus or minus the square root of 7, and you would write it like that in radical form, simply because that is the exact answer.